Hey there. Today, we'll be having a look at a pen for which I have received a rather large amount of review requests. And that pen is made by Schaefer, and I have to thank Schaefer because they supplied me with this pen. And we are talking about the Legacy Heritage. And there are four versions of the Legacy Heritage, and this is the black version with the palladium cap and gold highlights. Just so you know. There's also a completely gilded version. There's a palladium version. Check it out. Um, this is the box. We have seen these Schaefer boxes before. You open it up. There's a little, uh, well, little tray here that comes out. And then you get the standard two cartridges. What I like about Schaefer, I've always enjoyed that, is that they give you two cartridges, but one is black and one is blue. And these are proprietary cartridges. But it's nice that you can pick the color that suits you best. Um, here we have... The animal. The animal is also trying to be a reviewer. What do you think of the pen? I'm afraid she's rather vacant. <laughs> in any case, um, yes. So the other thing in here is the Schaefer user care guide and limited warranty. Um, for example, in Chinese, which is useful if you make sure you're able to read that. Uh, it even has this stuff in there in Dutch. So a whole bunch of languages. Uh, it's not a, a pretty booklet with color pictures that you sometimes get. It's, it's rather simple how to fill it, etc. Little tray, we're going to take off the pen. And here, in this little plastic sleeve, that was a box, we have the pen. Now, the pen is not huge, but here's a Jinhao X750. Uh, it's not huge, but it's a very decent size. And what is very noticeable is the weight. Now, if I look at this pen, then the first thing that comes to my mind is a Schaefer PFM. And Schaefer does indicate that they are kind of looking back to the nostalgic past where, I quote, a look in the eyes and a handshake were the norm. So, that's what they look back at. So, I'm, I'm thinking Schaefer PFM, the pen for men. Uh, that was a, a rather popular model they did quite a long time ago, and it's a very, uh, still a very uh, collectible pen model. Um, now, this is not, I think, the P of M's. I want to say they're piston-filled, but maybe they are plunger-filled. I'm sorry, I didn't look up the details. But it looks a lot like the pen. I also don't own a P of M, otherwise I could show you the uh, comparison. Now, let's have a look at the parts of the pen, and I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. We'll take some measurements, and then we'll do a writing sample. All right. Um, top of the cap, finial. Nothing really going on there. It's just a reflective bit. As I said, this is uh, palladium. It's quite nice. And I don't know how well you can see it, but this, the center band is actually uh, gold highlights, as are the clip. Of course, you have the uh, famous white dot, the trademark of Schaefer. And then here you have uh, Schaefer. It says Schaefer. And on the back end, it says nothing. Now we have the barrel, uh, rather thick, and that ends in a very tapered bit. Okay, and uh, now the really beautiful aspect of this pen, I think, is the nib. Because Schaefer used, I'm going to post it here, uh, Schaefer used their uh, old inlaid nib design, which is quite popular with collectors, and I would say rightly so. It looks very attractive, very pretty. Um, and it makes for a very, very uh, unique design. This is not something you see every day. Okay, this happens to be an 18 karat gold nib, and it's broad, and on the back end of the, uh, the section you can actually see it says B for broad. Fascinating feed, a little gold band there, and the pen, it's very simply a cartridge converter filled pen. Now, it's shaped for cartridges, shaped for converters, as I said, they're proprietary, so you cannot at least I do not think you would be able to put a standard international cartridge in there. The first thing that you notice when you take off the barrel is that it's very top heavy. Um, and I think I can definitely see there seems to be something like a brass liner in there. But it's really, it only extends up to about here. So it's not uh, lined entirely by brass. It's only at the end there and that makes it very top heavy. It's heavy. And that also makes for a rather nice balance. Of course, um, the section itself is not particularly heavy, 
But when you hold it, as you can see, again, not a huge pen, but as you hold it, you notice that weight. And if you post it, it really becomes quite top heavy. OK, uh, the nib, let's just talk about things I like and don't like. Uh, the nib I love, not only because of the looks, I think that inlaid design is very, very cool. Uh, this is abroad, but it also performs really well. Good starts, smooth, and a nice bit of line variation. Very pleased with that. And apart from that, very visually appealing, I think. I like this. I'm assuming it's a brass line. It could be any other material, but considering it's rather heavy, um, I like that bit in the end because it makes for a somewhat hefty pen. It's, it's a heavy pen uh, that's, that's pleasant to hold. So I like that. Um, I like the fact that it posts well, it posts rather deeply and quite securely, um, so the cap won't fall off, and that makes for a very robust feel when you hold it. Also, the pen is relatively beefy. Um, what I have here is Jinhao X750, and if you have a look at the two sections, uh, then you may see what I mean. It's definitely, considering you would hold it around there, it's a heavy, thick section. All right, these are things I like about it. Things I don't like about it. Well, my impressions of the pen have been very, very good. Um, I can mention two things that I may not like so much. First of all, the problem with the inlaid nib is that you touch it. It's almost impossible not to touch, and although it shouldn't tarnish, it is gold, uh, you are touching it, basically your nib. And I can see how some people who are very... Uh, obsessive about their their pens and not leaving fingerprints may find this annoying because I've just been pushing down on that a bit I have no idea if my camera will pick this up probably not no but yeah you can see a little bit at the the bottom end of that triangle there uh, you will definitely get some fingerprints on there it's a very minor gripe and I really really don't this is not a deal breaker for me but I know that some people may find that a little annoying it's not sharp so it's it's really nicely inlaid there are no sharp edges or anything I also like the step down from the barrel which as you can see is very very minor so there's no no sharp ridges or anything which is very cool the other thing is this the retail price of this pen at least here the uh, in the Netherlands the street price is about 435 euros so that makes this a very expensive pen bear in mind sip tea bear in mind 18 karat gold nib that will add something to the price but in the end you are buying a cartridge converter fill pen and at this price some people would expect a piston filler um, I find that the Schaefer converters hold a decent bit of ink but it's never as well I guess typically it would not be as high in ink capacity as you would get with a piston filler. So for some people that may be off-putting that at this price you get a cartridge converter filled pen. On the other hand, if you're on the road a lot, cartridges and converters definitely, especially cartridges, definitely offer an advantage when it comes to switching inks. Okay, let's take a couple of measurements. I've uh, have written them down uh, and then uh, we'll do a writing sample. Okay, the weight, uh, everything together, inked up, cap, barrel is three is uh, 38 grams. The uncapped length is 120.1 millimeters, that's 4.72 inches. Capped is 137.8 millimeters, that's 5.42 inches. Posted is 147 millimeters or 5.78 inches. Um, the section diameter ranges from about 8.9 to 12 millimeters, that's 0.35 to 0.47 of an inch. Uh, and the barrel ranges in diameter from 83 to 12.1 millimeters. That's again point thir about 0.33 to 0.47 of an inch. So there you have it. Again, Schaefer, thanks a lot for sending me the pen. I really enjoy it. Uh, I really appreciate it. We should have a writing sample. That's what we're going to do next. I hope this was useful. And I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. All right. So here we go with the. Schaefer Legacy Heritage the um, ink is Diamine 
Merlot. Mer Mer I just butchered that, but it says Merlot. Uh, and the nib is broad, and uh, this is an 18K nib. All right, so let's do a bit of writing. One thing I do note is that the pen does get relatively top-heavy with the cap on. Um, every time I try and every time I, I notice that. So, it's as I said, it's already lined with some metal in the back, so it's relatively heavy. Okay, well, very nice, very pleasant, very smooth. Let's have a look at what happens when we do some fast writing. As you can see, the pen keeps up relatively well, no real skipping, no skidding, uh, pretty good performance. As to wetness, no real complaints there. Uh, I think the pen lays down a very nice wet patch of ink. Line variation. This is definitely a nib that offers some line variation. As you can see, if you push it too hard, you will get some... Um, railroading, but assuming there is enough ink in the feed, here and there you have a slight hard start, but then it picks up fairly well. I would say that is some really decent line variation. Now, reverse writing, it's possible as you can see, it's very uh, light and also very sharp. You may notice that my pen got caught in the paper there. Um, you see, right here. Got caught in the paper and it splattered ink. So this is not a pen I would really use for uh, reverse writing. Okay, well, there you have it. Many thanks to Schaefer for supplying the pen. I hope this was useful. And um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.